so on the one hand you can avail subsidy or a sort of uh, equity free investment from the government which is up to 1 cr and on top of that government is also willing to help you uh, in reducing the burden of the loan which you will have to take for this project so if you do all of this together the hydroponic projects and uh, farming projects become much 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 more viable uh, and if you add to that that whatever income you are making is going to be tax free it, it's really a no brainer now friends many of you who would like to get into farming especially for the first timers you would be looking to get some kind of support from the government in terms of financing and there is such support available in terms of subsidy uh, the subsidy scheme has recently undergone a whole revamp there are many things which have changed in today's video we will talk about those things essentially we will be covering four different things the first part we will talk about the changes which have undergone in the subsidy scheme in the second part we will talk about how much subsidy can you get per acre of a farm if you want to set up a different kind of a farm uh, in the third part we will talk about how much larger or how big your farm should be to get the maximum benefit out of the subsidy scheme and in the fourth part we will also talk about how to get this subsidy how to apply it and go through the process so let's just get started without wasting any time so the subsidy scheme uh, which we are going to talk about is the subsidy by nhb national horticulture board uh, this scheme recently underwent a change and starting january 1st 2025 a lot of changes have happened in the scheme we'll only focus on the top five changes which impact us materially and let's talk about them one by one the first and the and a very positive impact or change is that earlier you could get a subsidy of up to 56 lakhs maximum which was the maximum cap now that cap has been increased from 56 lakhs to 1 cr so it's almost double if you had applied for subsidy pre january 1st 2025 you could maximum apply for 20, uh, 56 lakhs but now if you want to get into farming government understands you need support and government is willing to give that support of up to 1 cr per family for uh, getting into farming for uh, projects which com comes under subsidy now that's the that's the first change talking about second change one limitation which was with subsidy was uh, it always restricted the kind of crops that you could grow and and that's why when you go to any farmer you see that they will only be growing some x y and z some typical kind of crops because these were the only crops which had subsidy so that again is something good where government has increased uh, the gambit earlier the subsidy was available only on three variety of vegetable crops uh, first one was cucumber uh, second one was uh, capsicum and uh, third one was tomatoes now as per the new rules even some leafy greens come under subsidy so government has mentioned one or two but they have not mentioned a lot for example i saw parsley was mentioned but uh, you don't see a mention of many other crops and it also says that any crop approved by a research institute can also get subsidy However, this is something which is a little tricky right now because uh, if we go to subsidy portal and I can show you right now that still the crops that are eligible or for which you can apply for subsidy are the old three crops, cucumber, capsicum and tomato. But having said that, since the order has been passed and we are talking to government on this, very soon we see that leafy greens will also get covered in the subsidy. So the entire basket of crops will increase, which will make uh, business much more viable than uh, it currently is. And this is also... Uh, keeping in trends with the changes which is happening in the business world and leafy greens today make much more money than the old uh, crops uh, vegetable crops now this is the second change which is again a very positive change the third change which again is positive showing the progressive nature of the government is that now you can apply for subsidy multiple times there is no need to apply for subsidy only once and try to maximize the one cr benefit let's say you are limited by budget you cannot go for a very large project right now and right now you might be able to get a subsidy of only 25 lakhs so yes take your first step start the project take a subsidy of 25 lakhs and once your first project start generating some revenue you can go back for subsidy again and you can still avail the balance 75 lakhs so that's again a very positive change uh, which is there in the subsidy policy now coming to the fourth one which probably for uh, all the progressive farmers and all people who are interested in newest technologies is extremely relevant is that hydroponics has been included in subsidy now so earlier subsidy was limited to if you were growing crops in soil but now even if you are taking hydroponic systems for example let's say you are 
putting up a recirculating dust bucket system which is a very good system for a long term uh, uh, perspective you don't need to change it again and again uh, it increases the yield of crop uh, the, the biggest testament is that more than 40% of tomatoes in US are grown in this system. If you want to go for such a system, yes, now you can get subsidy in 2025. So that's again a very positive change and it shows that government is now believing that these technologies are really good and they are the need of the uh, time right now. They are the need of the hour and you, we need to use these technologies to ensure there is food security and enough output is coming from agriculture. So that was the fourth change. Fifth and again very important change. Now you can get subsidy even for automation. So even automation for nutrition, for fertigation is now included in subsidy, which was not the case earlier. So with these five positive changes, what really has resulted in is two things. One is the entire quantum has gone up, but again by introduction of hydroponics, introduction of automation, the quantum of subsidy that you can, can get on a fixed size of project has also increased. So this brings us to the part two, where we will now talk about if you are doing a one acre project, what is the kind of subsidy or what is the amount of subsidy that you can get now versus what probably you would have got if you wanted to do your project earlier. Now, we will talk about three different kinds of projects uh, and, and, and that's how this subsidy gets uh, allocated because the main umbrella stream under which the subsidy is given is for the poly house and then within poly house you get other components like hydroponics automation. So let's say you are setting up a poly house, which is a shade net based poly house. And uh, it's a hydroponic poly house with automation. Under old rules, if you were setting up a one acre poly house, the amount of subsidy that you could get for this kind of structure was approximately 21 lakhs. Now that number has become 29 lakhs. So there's a nine lakh increase for the first acre if you are going for a shade net poly house uh, with uh, hydroponics and automation. Let's say you are going for a naturally ventilated poly house because shade net would not give you rain protection. You want rain protection. You want to grow seasonal crops and you are going for a naturally, uh, naturally ventilated poly house. Then under the old scheme for one acre, you could get up to 24 lakhs in subsidy. Under this new scheme, under the changes in the scheme, now this 24 can maximize, uh, can get maximized to 35 lakhs. So for a one acre setup, you can get up to 35 lakh of subsidy. It may be less depending upon what components you are putting, what you're not putting, but the max limit is 35 lakh, which you can get for one acre of setup. And let's say you want to uh, not even go for natural ventilated. You want to target off season crops, which means you want to go for climate controlled high tech poly house. If you want to go for that kind of poly house under the old scheme, the subsidy was around 35 lakhs, which you could have got for one acre. Under the new scheme, this number is now 45 lakh, uh, which you can get. So this is how uh, much amount of support you can get as an investment. Uh, and, and, and for this investment, government is not asking you for an equity. This investment is something which government is giving uh, to give you a support to start getting into farming, to start getting new technologies adopted so that uh, you can get a soft lending. Uh, you can start your business and your uh, break even periods, your recovery times are less. Uh, these are the kind of supports you can get if you start uh, one acre of project under the subsidy scheme. Now, let's say uh, budget is not a limitation for you and you don't want to do it part by part. You want to get the entire one crore of subsidy which is eligible within the one go and you want to figure out what is the project size I should go for uh, if I want to get the entire one crore of subsidy. This is the part three or the third item that we will cover today. And, and let's again come back to the three different kind of structures. For the shade net structure, if you want to get utilize the entire one acre, uh, one crore of subsidy, then the project that you have to set up should be around five acres. So it's around two hectares. You can set up two poly houses of one hectare each, and uh, you will be able to uh, get around five acres of uh, one crore of subsidy. Uh, coming to the second option, naturally ventilated poly house. If you want to uh, set up a naturally ventilated poly house. And within that, you want to get uh, use the entire quantum of uh, one CR of subsidy. You should go for around 3.75 acres or roughly uh, approximate four acre of project. If you do a four acre project, you can maximize your subsidy and get the entire benefit that the government is willing to provide to you. Uh, if you want to go for a climate control poly house, uh, then if uh, since the quantum of subsidy is more, uh, you need to set up a little smaller uh, setup. If you go for a 2.6 acres, which is little above one hectare, uh, uh, then you can maximize and get entire one CRO subsidy if you are going for a climate control kind of poly house. 
So this is the uh, third part that we wanted to uh, cover. Now let's talk about the fourth part. If you want to apply for subsidy, how you can go about it. And before that, one more thing, this is not the only thing. So these are the benefits that the government is, uh, is giving you. Uh, as you might be aware, if you have been following our videos that if you want subsidy, you have to necessarily take a loan. There is another benefit which the government has given. There's a scheme called AIF, Agri Infrastructure Fund. Earlier hydroponics was not covered under that. Now starting this year, hydroponics is also covered under that. What happens with that scheme is that whatever loan quantum you are taking from the bank at XYZ interest rate, under this scheme, up to two CR of loan, for up to two CR of loan, government will pay 3% of your interest. So let's say you got an interest a rate of around 9%, for example. Then you will only be paying 6%, 3% will come from the government. Let's say your interest rate was 8%. You'll only be paying 5%, 3% will come from the government. So on the one hand, you can avail subsidy or a sort of uh, equity free investment from the government, which is up to one CR. And on top of that, government is also willing to help you uh, in reducing the burden of the loan, which you will have to take for this period. So if you do all of this together, the hydroponic projects and uh, farming projects become much, much, much more viable. Uh, and if you add to that, that whatever income you are making is going to be tax free. It, it's really a no brainer now. Now, keeping all this aside, let's come to the uh, final part of the video. If you have to apply for subsidy, how do you go about it? So there are uh, essentially two ways of doing it. Uh, you can actually do it yourself. You don't need any intermediary. You don't need any third party to do it. The process is online. Uh, you can go to NHB website and submit your application yourself. You will need to do some follow-ups, go do the follow-ups and you can get the subsidy yourself. You don't need to apply through anyone. Uh, the other way is that you apply through some agents. The problem with applying through agents is that generally they would ask for a cut and uh, like most of the systems everywhere, uh, especially in our country, things exist in the shades of gray. Uh, typically the cut values uh, to be around 10%. So let's say if you are going for a one crore subsidy, what you end up will, uh, getting will be around 90 lakh and the rest 10% will go into uh, the commissions and fees that the agent will charge. So you can apply directly, uh, get 100% of the 100% of the subsidy, but there may be a challenge. You might not understand the process. Go to the website, understand the process, or if you need any help, you can apply through us. We don't charge a single rupee for subsidy and 100% of subsidy comes to you. Oh, 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 oh,